بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and very good morning uh, today is our first lecture on EMM two five three dynamics um, and welcome to the class uh, it will going to be a long week so hours ahead we will cover the topics of dynamics uh, my name is uh, Prof. Zaidi Ben Muhammad Ripin I will cover the first uh, seven weeks and then uh, there will be two other lectures uh, who will also cover uh, this lecture uh, which is Associate Professor uh, Dr. Abdullah and Dr. Fauzi, we should, uh, they will take the second half. So, uh, of course, I'm from the School of Mechanical Engineering and I'm leaving here my email and also my uh, handphone number in case you want to ask me questions uh, on the WhatsApp or on the, on the email. All right, so I'll be taking the first half, which covers the uh, kinematics. All right, and uh, Dr. Abdullah will take the second half, and Dr. Fauzi will take the uh, cover the kinetics parts of the lecture. So I think so. Uh, I will cover the kinematics and those guys will cover the kinematics and for the kinematics there are uh, two parts the first is the particles and then the second one okay and also followed by the uh, rigid bodies so we will cover these two parts uh, simply put uh, what is a the difference what is the difference between particles and rigid bodies uh, it's just simply put particles are where we are not concerned with the geometry of the object so we assume that everything is just a point yeah so uh, we are not influenced by the shape of the object Whereas the three bodies and all the masses, masses is concentrated at a point. So mass is concentrated at a point. At a point. Uh, this is, for example, if you take a ball or a marble, yeah, and you just represent it as a point. So, uh, and then the mass is given like one kg or one gram. Whereas for rigid bodies, mass is distributed. Mass is distributed. So, there is a distribution between concentrated mass. So you just need. For example, m equals to 4 gram to represent the object. This is an example, yeah. So this example. Uh, going back to this ball or marble. So it is. There are two things that you must you can use to describe the mass of the system. And how it is distributed first the mass may be like four gram and there is this term the moment of inertia how the mass is distributed around the center so that can be a number so let's say it is it is like two gram millimeter square yeah so you need two Features or two numbers to represent them, whereas for a concentrated 
uh, for particle you just need mass one number to represent the feature of the object okay let's move now why do we study dynamics uh, there is a good reason why we want to study dynamics I just put here an example uh, of a simple machines not so simple machine uh, whereas in this machine we uh, you call this four bar linkages okay so this is a, a typical machine that is used as an example in our study this is called a four bar linkages and this is a flagship application uh, for example so we have uh, why is it four bar this is bar number one this is bar number two bar number three and bar number four which is the part that is connecting these two points you can't say it but we call it four bars so this bar number four and this is a typical uh, structure that came out uh, every year in uh, exams uh, because we think that while, what, if you understand this structure it will make you able to understand a lot of other things in in the machineries so for example like if you if you drive this link supposedly this link is connected to a shaft and to a motor yeah so this is a motor this is this is a motor forget about this we just connecting them so this motor is turning this link let's say this link oa and this point is b and c let's say this motor is turning this link and it is rotating at say uh, 4 rpm yeah so we are interested to know what is the velocity and the motion of this link what happened when I drive this at 4 rpm and maybe I'm accelerating the link OA is accelerating on the same direction at 2 radian per second square okay. okay why is it yes it will ask me why are you am I using different units it doesn't matter you can convert from rpm to radian per second or degree per second uh, at this level you should be able to do the conversion quite uh, uh, competently so so we are interested to know what is the speed of bc when compared when we know the input of oa and also we can determine what is the velocity angular velocity of ab and bc so this is a basically an academic exercise to understand uh, why of course today we are not able we will not be able to uh, uh, solve this kind of problem but uh, down at week seven after seven weeks or six weeks of following the class or even four weeks you should be able to solve this kind of problem and how do we and how what what is the application of this so for example this is a simple application okay and there is a reason why uh, why certain structures are made in a certain way so this is called a parallel bar linkages uh, because there is a parallel bar here this bar yeah, this bar this bar is parallel yeah so what happened is that what happened if you if you look at this whole structure here is this actually a four bar linkages this is a this is the link the pivot the point support point and it's sort of fixed here yeah and because of its parallel bar uh, when we turn this around or when we turn this bar for example like in a new position let's say this is a new position It will always be in parallel because of the same length and you will find that this thing is 
you will find that this is always horizontal. Yeah, this link, for example, this is uh, A B link in its new position A dash B dash is always horizontal. Always horizontal. So you will have this lamp here will be designed to be always horizontal. So if I I were to draw about my drawings now go here. Yeah. So you will see that the position of the lamp here so it will cover this area and so on. So so there is a reason why we study four bar linkages and that gives us a good uh, motivation to study. So this kind of uh, structure will always come out in the uh, exam. So I, I hope you will pay attention why we study this and, and there are other levels of knowledge that is required to build your fundamental before you can uh, use your knowledge to solve this kind of problem. Yeah. So this is another application of that four bar linkages uh, where we have the input link, intermediate link and the output link. Yeah. So you can see that we are uh, applying this to a what called a four bar or parallel mechanism robot. Yeah. So this is called a parallel mechanism robot so how do we uh, can you see where the pedal is on the robot arm so if you see this robot arm these two points here and that point there is a system, a four bar system. So if you draw carefully, this is the point, and this arm will rotate is able to rotate yeah and this arm is also rotate but this this big arm will not move relative to so i can somewhat for this particular analysis i can close it there and i can rotate this in order to produce this kind of rotation so that kind of similarity to this uh, allows you to transfer or project your knowledge of the system uh, into a four bar uh, linkages yeah so that that is to me uh, one of the good reason why we study this so there are many robots with such arm uh, this robot is a lightweight robot because you don't see normally they are not using a big single structure arm here and they try to distribute the linkages over here. So, so this uh, this is a, a parallel uh, mechanism uh, robot. This is lightweight robot, and lightweight means you can move them uh, quite fast and very short response time. Yeah. So that's one of the reason why we do this kind of uh, analysis. All right. Okay, for the coverage of the two major chapters, which are kinematics of particles, chapter 12 and chapter 16 in the book by Hibbler, we'll be covering the kinematics of rigid bodies. So, uh, these are the two things that will be covered in the first seven weeks. Uh, there are some intermediate chapters, 13, 14 and 50, which covers the kinematics, but those will be taken by by the other lectures yeah so uh, let's go into some definition uh, uh, because these things will always come up when we read the textbook 
The first one is what do we understand by mechanics, right? Mechanics uh, is basically the study on the interaction of force and on object, okay? So for mechanics, there are two major uh, division of mechanics. The first one is statics. And the other one is dynamics. Okay, so you have covered statics in your first year, where you study the effect of force and how it re it gives the uh, how the object react to the force when it is applied to the object. So, for example, there is a beam here, and when you apply a force, there is a cantilever beam. When you apply a force to that beam, it now start to deflect. Yeah, so you will see some sort of uh, deflection. So that deflection is the response of the object to the force. This is statics. But if you apply and you don't, statics means doesn't change with time. So basically time is not an important aspect of static. But dynamics is a study of the other part of the mechanics where now you are interested with what happened to the motion of the object when you apply the force to it how does it respond okay for example back to this beam yeah and you apply this is a cantilever beam and I take a hammer and I knock it okay what will happen to the to the beam so the beam will start to vibrate okay so that is part of the motion because the beam is constrained it's it can only vibrate and it gives some form of vibration if you apply the same force to a golf ball for example you hit it yeah the ball will start to move the ball will start to move with a certain acceleration and certain velocity and maybe after some time you want to see what is what is the displacement of the object so so the ball will start to travel and you have what we call a trajectory so the path of the ball traveling over space is called the trajectory of the ball and these are basically why people start to study things in the early years because they are interested in one thing which is how to make your cannonball how to predict where is the trajectory of the cannonball so and you can see some of the old books during the Napoleon time they wanted to study the trajectory of the cannonball so that they can destroy a castle or something like that yeah the other one in dynamics there are two things this is the kinematics and the kinetics so the kinematics are when you study the motion you analyze the motion without consideration of force uh, what do you mean by this it's basically a geometrical study of the motion Okay, so a geometrical analysis of the motion. For example, trajectory analysis, we basically assume that the only force that is acting on the ball or on the on the particle or on the projectile is the gravity. For example, in this cannonball, we assume that it is accelerating downwards at a acceleration equivalent to the 9.81 or the g constant it depends on where you are in the world or on the earth so you assume that you basically do not put the consideration of force on the motion you can do that because it is a constrained motion uh, you know what happened to the object there's a lot of words here constrained motion for them we'll come back to that and then finally we go to kinetics where you start to do the analysis of motion with consideration of force for example, if you apply, let's say, 
a bullet in a barrel. Let's say this is a bullet. Okay. And then you apply an explosion here. So basically there is a force directly proportional to the pressure due to the explosion times the area. So you want to know what happened to the bullet as it what is the exit velocity of the bullet. For example, this is the, the end of the gun and you want to see what is the exit velocity of the bullet uh, at that time. So you can understand so-called the muzzle velocity. This is called the muzzle velocity. Okay. Similarly, if you are studying uh, 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 internal combustion engine, let's say this is the piston and this is the crank shaft. Yeah. So inside the piston, there is spark plugs and there is an explosion here. And you want to study how much the piston, uh, the engine will start to accelerate when you apply the force. So, many, so there are many, many things that are dependent upon our understanding of the consideration when we know what is the force acting on the object. So, uh, so, the, so, so what we study today on dynamics is basically we want to see how the object will move when we apply force to it. Yeah, so that's uh, basically the background of the system. You can think of any other example. For example, uh, when you play soccer or when there's an accident, whenever there is a force acting on it, there must be a change of motion. There's something happened to the motion and also to the shape of the thing because of the static interaction and the dynamic interaction. There will be some changes to the motion of the object. So we will start off with uh, some understanding of the coordinate system that will be used uh, in the study. There are three uh, major coordinate systems. The first one is the Cartesian. The second, it is also known as the XY coordinates. The second one is the normal and tangent. The third one is the cylindrical coordinates. So we are most of you are very familiar with Cartesian, so you can use your right hand as a way of understanding or trying to put the coordinate system. Suppose this is your right hand, yeah, uh, so it's not a beautiful hand, but a right hand anyway. So, so this is your X, this is your Y, and that's your Z. Oh, so a right hand system, yeah. So you will call this right hand. So basically, you have the X Y Z system. X Y Z system. Normal and tangent is not is is depends on the path. It is path dependent, yeah. So let's see what is a path dependent. Path dependent. So it depends on the path of the projectile or object that you want to study. So let us assume, let us assume that an object is following. This is the path of the object. Yeah. So at this part, this particular point, for example, let's say, let's call this point A. They are the tangent line to the path. So we call this, we label this as T or unit vector T. And there is also a normal to the path. And we label that as N. So that is the, so if it's here, let's say this point B, the tangent would be somewhere here and that will be normal to it and so on and so forth yeah so some of you may ask what is the why is it to the right and not to the left anybody can think why and why normal is up there and not down here anybody can we take a normal down here Yeah, so you'll find that explanation. 
in the textbook or you can uh, do some online research to understand if we can do that normal and uh, not to that kind of direction. It can go inwards the curve or outward of the curve. The other one is the cylindrical coordinate system which you can build around the Cartesian coordinate system for, for a beginning. So we have usually we can uh, identify a this is on the on the plane for example so let's say this is our reference point and this is the location of the object so the coordinates of this object can be represented by two things how far it is from the origin and this is called r let's say this is an object a and what is the angle that it meets what does the angle that r made reference with reference to the horizontal line so that is the theta so and then you just add another so this is r theta and you can easily add normal to that the z direction why do we need all these different uh, motions because some of these uh, things are easier to measure using angular system some are much easier to measure using Cartesian system any thoughts on this why why do we need to use r theta z because there are rotational motion involved okay if it is just a straight line for example it would be easier to so if it is a straight motion or a linear motion or rectilinear motion it will be easier to use uh, the Cartesian coordinate system if it is only moving on a straight line which is rectilinear yeah so it's easier to use Cartesian but cylindrical you used to, to use uh, rotational motion for example one of the way of detecting a plane is by using radar yeah so suppose you have a radar system and this radar is sending out a radio wave and there is a plane somewhere there okay and that plane is giving you bouncing back its signal to the radar so from that time the signal came back they do some computer processing and now you can see why is it r theta is relevant uh, say this is a helicopter for example, or whatever so 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 you can see why this is so relevant to this kind of analysis yeah so now i hope you understand the three different coordinate system and why we use this three coordinate system okay so uh, let's move on to the movement type there are basically uh, two types of movement the first one is the rectilinear movement it is a motion along a straight line and second one is the curvilinear motion which is motion along a curved path so if you move along a straight line okay and you can either move to the left to the right let's say the right is positive and you can move to the left is negative from your origin or your reference line so uh, so you, it's, a, it's a simple uh, one dimensional motion uh, where the particle is moving along a straight line curvilinear motion is motion along a curve path as we have covered uh, we have uh, covered just now on the normal and tangent motion curvilinear motion is when the particle is moving along a curved path so so you can find what is the speed along its path using either the normal tangent coordinates or x y or r theta z it depends on what uh, what you want to use in your analysis so these are uh, two big words here rectilinear which is a motion along a straight line and then curvilinear which is a motion along a curved path i think that's quite uh, straightforward to understand so we begin our study with the uh, rectilinear motion on the rectilinear motion uh, we have got uh, 
first we have got displacement yeah and which is represented by s and then we have a velocity which is the rate of change of displacement which is ds over dt or the first inter uh, differentiation of the uh, displacement and that would give us velocity and then we have acceleration which is equivalent to the uh, rate of change of velocity over time or the differentiation of v versus t and or the double differentiation of s versus t or, and that gives us the, the acceleration and there's a final um, uh, relationship that we can use which is vdv equals to ads or v times the rate of change of velocity the velocity this is the velocity times the rate of change of the velocity dv equals to the acceleration this is the acceleration uh, times the rate of change of the displacement so this is also one important equation that we need to understand on the study of rectilinear motion okay so you will see this uh, a lot in our uh, study of uh, uh, kinematics I just want to digress a little bit in order to give you the overall view of what happened in a system for example like you know we started with the Newton's second law uh, Newton's second law says that uh, a motion there are three parts of the of the law but the second part is the one that is of interest and it is usually that is represented by a famous uh, equation f equals to ma this equation uh, shows that the acceleration the acceleration of the object is dependent upon the <coughs> force and also the mass of the object so you've got the acceleration in the direction of the resultant force equals to ma so we can now write that in the form of uh, the form that we are using now like for example ma equals to dv over dt so if you write f then you arrange this equation bring it here you will have f dt equals to m dv yeah so what is f dt f dt is the if you integrate this yeah from t0 from 0 to t and 0 to v for example you start so you get f t equals to m v2 over minus m v1 this is your impulse momentum equation okay. if we so that's get you the impulse momentum equation if you now arrange a you take this equation and you arrange it as f ds you if you put f ds just add ds here yeah and then you can get m ads yeah but you can see that when you add ads here this is equivalent to what we have on this side which is vdv so m v d v and that give us the if you integrate on both sides you will have what we term as energy m v square half v naught and v1 yeah so we have this as the work energy
So you got three things that you will cover later on in your kinetics. This is the force acceleration. This is the work energy. And finally, this is number one, this is number two, and finally you have number three, which is the impulse momentum. And we build this based on our knowledge of kinematics on the rectilinear motion. So this gives you the overall perspective of the things. Uh, it will be quite uh, wholesome to uh, remember this or understand this, but with time and with a lot of exercise, I think you will form the right understanding on, on this subject. Yeah. So the next one. For example, like we'll, we'll today uh, just do one example or two examples on the rectilinear motion. Uh, this example is a car. A car is moving from rest uh, with a velocity of v equals to 3t square plus 2t meter per second, where t is in seconds. Determine the position and acceleration when t is equals to three seconds okay so there is a word here from rest what does rest means when the car is moving from rest we assume that at t equals to zero the velocity is zero so that is what we mean by rest so it moves with a equation we know the velocity V equals to 3t squared plus 2t. And then it asks us for the position and acceleration at t equals to 3 seconds. Okay. So let's do this. So we know that V equals to 3t squared plus 2t. And we know that acceleration is, acceleration is the differentiation of dV over dt and that gives us 60 plus 2 so when t equals to 3 seconds at t equals to 3 seconds our acceleration is 6 times 3 plus 2 that will give us uh, 18 plus 20 so a is equals to 20 meter the second square. That's a very straightforward uh, answer to that question. So when t equals to 3, a equals to 20 meter per second square. Um, please be mindful of the units. You need to write your units very clearly at the end of the numbers so we know what quantity are we talking about. And then the question of position. Position is, because this is a rectilinear motion, so uh, assuming it's a rectilinear motion, so we have a position. So what is the relationship between position and the velocity? So we have V, you remember, equals to dS over dt. Yeah. So, uh, so we can rewrite the equation v dt equals to ds okay so when we integrate this yeah from where to where from 0 to s because at t equals to 0 this is t 0 up to t equals then this into to s <coughs> excuse me so we will have the equation of uh, B. yeah so so then we integrate this from 0 to t 3 t square plus 2 t dt and then we integrate to become s yeah so we we'll become s don't have to write it twice. So we will have 3t cubed 
over 3 plus 2 c square over 2 from 0 to 3 so you can cancel that so we have t cube plus 2t between 0 to 3 and we can rewrite that as equals to 3 to the power of 3 plus 2 times 3 so 3 to the power of 3 is 9 27 27 plus 6 27 plus 6 is 33 so it's 33 meter and then it's a positive 33 meter yeah so s equals to so that is the answer s equals to 33 so if if we draw a straight line and this is o where it starts at t equals to zero after three seconds it is here 33 meters from start so the car is basically here and it is still moving so because the car is considered as a particle so we don't really care about the size of the car we assume that it is the location of the center of gravity of the car so that's basically the first uh, example and we move on to the next example uh, so this example too is a particle moving along a horizontal path with a velocity uh, same as before or oh, we move out the equation here so there is a particle uh, where it is in seconds uh, so uh, it's given here that the velocity uh, is uh, 3t square minus 6t oh, sorry uh, let me see particle moving along a horizontal path particle moving along a horizontal path uh, uh, located in 3.5 seconds let me check where I have that particle uh, moving around 3.5 seconds Okay, so we have the same uh, almost form of expression v equals to 3t squared minus 6t. So that's the equation. Uh, so determine the distance traveled in 3.5 seconds. Uh, your same kind of approach, this is just to get you running up and running with the work so uh, it's initially located at origin o as before let's say this so and then uh, determine the distance travel in 3.5 seconds so it doesn't say anything about is it moving from rest so let's let's put a question is it like is it like is it moving from rest <coughs> is it moving from rest the answer is that we don't know we are not sure about whether it's moving from rest so but we can check and we can check from the equation at t equals to zero at t equals to zero the velocity is given like 
v equals to 3 times 0 square minus 6 times 0 square. So, yes. So, at t equals to 0, v equals. So, it is moving from rest. Yes, it is. So, find the distance travel in 3.5 seconds. Uh, so, that's quite straightforward, I guess. So, we can, what, what equations do we use here? So, we want to relate between V and S. So, there are two equations that we can use. It's a V uh, equals to dS over dt. And we can now, dS, this is dS now. So, we can rearrange the system so that dS equals to V dt. So, we integrate both of them. Yeah. So, then we will integrate 3t square minus 60. <clears throat> okay, from 0 to t. So we have 3t cube over 3 minus 60 square over 2 from. 0 to t yeah so we will have t cube minus 3 t square and is from 0 to t equals to 3.5 seconds yeah so this is where this 3.5 seconds is here. so you now get uh, can get the answer to that this is a simple so s equals to t so 3.5 cube minus 3 3.5 square yeah i'll leave it there and what is the unit here unit here that is in meter okay so that is for example that so there are plenty of uh examples in the book uh, you can look at then i've started with a simple example so you will take the opportunity to slowly do slowly build up build up your understanding by doing second this is the first advice the second advice and there's only two advice today is that you keep on repeating repeating until you understand. Why? Because the brain loves repetition. Yeah. So there you go for the first part of this we have covered the rectilinear motion and uh, we'll do some more exercise down the road but for now I'll I'll stop here thank you assalamu uh, alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh